ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಫುಟ್ ಹಿಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹಿಮಾಲಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ so oh man the last couple of weeks since i took sanyas i guess it's just been a few days i'm not keeping score so i'm not going to give a number i've been in more or less continuous ecstasy i had to get out of south india i was burning up my body has gotten so much energy so much heat and i'm uh, sleeping less eating less So I am escaping to the Himalayas or Himalaya to pronounce it properly. And I got to tell you guys a few things, huh? I'm going to disappear for a while. I might show up again, I might not. <laughs> But I'm going for the prize. I got confidential instructions. and i'm going to carry them out so you know we've been talking about this chart of the four darshanams sad darshanam look it up on the internet <laughs> i'm in the last stage now and when you hear the story you know the buddha he's sitting underneath the bodhi tree and maya comes to him in person and offers all enjoyments and and all material things and everything huh? and he has to he has to turn it down and then he gets the liberation huh that's the way it is but she comes personally and offers the key huh i got it i keep it in my pack here <laughs> no my my confidential friends know what it is but even they can't actually uh do the sadhana hmm? i don't care what anybody tells you even some apparently uh high realized souls it says in vedas in upanishads you can't realize brahman unless you're sanyasi hmm? that doesn't necessarily mean you know uh dressing up like this and all that but it means completely it ain't go of desire including the desire to be comfortable the desire to be uh regarded as intelligent and so on and so on subtle desires too the desire for enlightenment is the last one to go when you realize that we've already we've always been <laughs> but it has to be realized not intellectual knowledge because the intellect is part of the problem it's not the solution so when people tell you that you can remain in household life you can remain in sex life you can remain in the business world and still uh, realize brahman uh either they're bullshitting you or they're being diplomatic is not possible vedas categorically deny that is possible not in just one place in many many places huh so you have to get somehow or other to this platform then you can really meditate then you can realize brahman it's not enough to declare aham brahmasmi you know if you haven't been initiated into the mantra and the practices the, the tantric kundalini yoga practices that go along with it that you don't have a chance you don't have a chance that's why this whole time years now as a monk then as a renunciant then now as a sanyasi I'm telling you you have to follow Vedas. Vedas are the authority, not anybody else. 
and you have to find someone who can represent them to you accurately, a real teacher, a realized teacher. Otherwise, you know, people are just going to blow smoke at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not going to get anywhere. huh? I see it in Tiruvannamalai, thousands, and, and in Rishikesh, huh? tens of thousands of especially Westerners coming, thinking they can get the secret. Huh? And the secret is hidden in plain sight, but they refuse to follow the instructions. Huh? What can anybody do, even God? <laughs> if you won't follow the instructions, you're just lost. I'm sorry. So I don't give a darn anymore about teaching or taking disciples or whatever. Let me tell you, I'll just tell you one of the instructions I got from my sannyas guru. Uh, that this whole human race, billions and billions of people, huh, is like seeds. You look at a tree, like I'm sitting here under a tamarind tree. A tamarind tree produces thousands of these long pods, and each one has, I don't know, dozens of seeds in it. Huh? So there's thousands and thousands of seeds. How many of those seeds are going to grow into another tamarind tree and bloom and create more seeds? Well, maybe one or two <laughs> in the best case. Hmm? But that one or two makes the whole effort worthwhile. So, in a similar way, my guru says, this whole human race, billions and billions of people all over the world, are seeds. They're asleep. The seed can sleep in the ground sometimes for a long time. And then when the conditions are just right, it sprouts. And even of the seeds that sprout, most of them don't make it into a full plant. And even of the plants or trees that come, then most of them don't make it to maturity and bear fruits. So <laughs> if even one, one or two people reach completion on this path out of the whole human race, in nature's calculus, it makes the whole thing worthwhile. See, just like nature produces thousands and millions of plants, uh, just to make sure that the species is propagated. Well, in the same way, nature produces thousands and millions and billions of people to just to see that the line of realized souls is propagated from one generation to the next. You see, that's the calculus of nature. It's abundance. Huh? Billion experiments to find one that works in the current conditions as they are. Genetic lottery <laughs> or karmic lottery in this case. Because it's your prarabdha karma that determines if you have the adhikar, the qualification to pursue the path. And then, on top of that, you have to be sincere. You have to be sincere and dedicated, willing to sacrifice everything. That's sannyas. Sannyas is the ultimate Vedic jagna, or sacrifice. But once you sacrifice all desires into the fire of the controlled mind, as described in the Gita, then, then <laughs> meditation begins. Huh? You idiots. You say, I'm going to sit down and meditate. <laughs> you can't meditate for more than two seconds. You can't artificially suppress the mind. It comes bouncing back with redoubled force and blasts you all over the universe. <laughs> all over space and time. So shut up about that already, huh? You should be working on the the preparations on the foundations for meditation, which are karma yoga, bhakti yoga. And remember, there's a difference between karma and karma yoga. 
Karma is when you give a couple bucks to the homeless guy on the corner so he can go out and buy booze or drugs. Idiot. Karma yoga is when you give something at the temple or you give something to a real sadhu, a bona fide sadhu, guru. That's karma yoga. There has to be a link with God. Otherwise, you're just throwing it away. Might as well just throw the money in the trash. It'd be better than if you give it to someone who uses it for sinful things. So, in the same way, there's phony bhakti and there's real bhakti. Phony bhakti is like in the church, huh? where everybody prays for 15 minutes <laughs> and then pretends to listen to the sermon and then goes home and ignores it everything. <laughs> That's phony bhakti. Real bhakti means I give up everything for my Lord, to serve my Lord. I gave up everything and came to India in 1971 to serve my guru and God in the temples. Uh, and I served him for over 30 years. That's bhakti. It's not just a fashion, huh? not just put on some cool robes and dance around and stuff. No. That's not even the beginning of bhakti. That's still karma yoga. And once you get to the point where actual love blooms spontaneously in the heart, that's bhakti. huh? Come on. Don't let these guys fool you. They're just businessmen. They're just politicians. Oh, man. Oh, this world is so screwed up. And at the same time, it's perfect. <laughs> You have to see hmm, that Goddess has made this world to please her husband, uh, Pashupati, <laughs> and filled it with so many Pashus. <laughs> Pashu means animal, but it also means attachment. So if you're attached, you're Pashu. You fall in that fifth category below the Vedic path. Uh, even if you are outwardly pretending, God isn't fooled. You can even fool yourself, but you can't fool God. So, I'm going to freeze this channel again, close the comments, and just leave it as it is. Boss, finished, you know. And uh, do the special sadhana that only sannyasis can do. I mean, others can imitate but only a real sannyasi who has actually let go of all desires. Uh, that's bliss. Desire is suffering. Because why? Desire says, well, I want this, but I don't have it now, so maybe sometime in the future I'll get it. That's suffering. Bliss is, hey, I don't need anything. Everything is fine. Huh? and will always be fine, and has always been fine. That's bliss. So, it's up to you. You can hold on to your desires and go on suffering life after life after life. Or you can let them go. You know, I mean, this is the same thing that my Adi guru taught me 50 years ago, or 45 years ago, whatever it was. Huh? But now I'm realizing it. That's the difference. If it's got to be done by force, renunciation is not authentic. If it has to be done by an effort of will, it's going to fail. Only when renunciation happens spontaneously because you see and realize something higher. Uh, that's the real renunciation. That's the real sannyas. And so I'm about to go on a journey into the high Himalayas and... Uh, I don't, I don't suffer from cold anymore. It's so weird. <laughs> I used to hate cold. I was born in Florida. But because now I got real sannyas, no more problem. Take cold bath in ice cold water. Nah, it feels good. <laughs> so here we are on the path. I hope to see you here one of these days. Again, it's up to you. I put everything here on this channel 
to document the steps on my path. Of course, yours is going to be different, but uh, it's up to you to do the work. And we'll be here waiting for you. <laughs> oh, ta-ta-ta.